All right, let's do the monopoly part now. The first question has to do with the fact that it's so difficult to break up uh, some type of monopolies, particularly uh, utilities. We talk about this question after we watch a video from Stephen Colbert. The question reads, the main reason why it's so hard for the government to break up AT&T has to do with the fact that a phone utility company usually face high fixed costs, low marginal costs, high marginal costs, low marginal revenue. The answer is A, high fixed costs. In order to answer this question or explain it a little differently that we did in class, let's come up with some made up numbers that are not necessarily realistic, but that will actually make sense within the context of the question and to explain what we're trying to do here. So let's say that the cost of installing a cell phone network for a company like AT&T was $100,000. Now this is a fixed cost because they will have to install this network before they open their doors. And it's really, really expensive. And after they, they open the doors, they'll have to continue to pay for this. Now, let's say that the cost of maintaining the network, on the other hand, was actually relatively low. It was actually $2 times whatever unit of output you have. And this will be a variable cost, again, because it's related to output. The more output, the more cost. So that's why it's a variable cost. Now, if a company like AT&T produces something like, let's say, 1,000 units of output, then the average fixed cost, or the cost per unit of the fixed input, will be $100. And that's $100,000 divided by 1,000. The average variable cost, on the other hand, will be 2 times 1,000 divided by 1,000, and that will be $2. Now, when you add these two things, you come up with the average total cost, so that is the cost per unit of output, and that will be $102. So you see that most of that is actually goes to pay for the fixed cost. And the higher the unit of outputs will be, the relatively lower the average total cost will be. Because, again, the average fixed cost will get smaller with output because you have more units to split out that huge cost. But let's say that now that the U.S. government decides to break up the monopoly into many different firms, and now each firm is going to produce 200 units of output. Now, let's see what happens to the uh, average fixed cost. Well, the average fixed cost is still relatively high because they have, they have to pay for that already. That had been incurred. And that will be end up being, well, now you're going to have to divide the 100,000 times the 200. So that will be $500. The average variable cost continues to be the same, $2. So the, the, the cost per unit is actually now $502. So see what's happening here is that the, the more companies, the less output each company, and therefore the higher the cost per unit because you have less, less units, less output to divide by the huge cost that you have to incur in the beginning. So that is why it's so difficult to break up a monopoly. The government try to break up the monopoly, the cost per unit will increase for each company, and they'll have a, a tendency and incentive to merge again in order to reduce the cost of operation. And this is the reason why it's so difficult to break up monopolies, such as um, phone utilities or, or anything that has high fixed costs. It's going to be difficult to break and to try to stay away from a monopoly. The question has to do with um, the marginal earning marginal cost decision, how, how much to produce for a monopoly. The question reads, suppose we observe that Fran, the only producer of a patented bicycle light, monopolist, lowers the price of a light from $20 to $18. Economic theory assures us that what? Well, there's a couple of things we know about monopoly. Basically, three things are important here. One, the, demand, the monopoly is going to price based on the demand curve, and the demand curve is downward sloping. So in order to lower the price, in order to increase the quantity, they have to lower the price and vice versa. Second, the marginal revenue curve is going to be below the, the demand curve, precisely because of what we just said, because the monopolies will have to lower the price in order to increase quantity and vice versa. And third, the monopoly is also going to maximize profits, producing an quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Now, knowing those three things, let's do process of elimination here. The first one says, France marginal revenue is greater than $18 after she lowers the price. Well, that's clearly wrong because we already said that for a monopolist, marginal revenue is always below the price. And when the price is 18, marginal revenue has to be actually less than that. B says, Mar France marginal cost has decreased as a result of her decision to lower the price. Well, that's also wrong. Because one of the things we stress in this part is that any change in marginal cost is not going to directly change marginal revenue, or any change in revenue is not going to affect cost at all. They're both independent of each other, even though we are using both of them at the same time 
in order to make economic decisions. So B is also wrong. Now C says, France marginal revenue is at least as great as, his, as her marginal cost after she lowers the price. Well, that could be true because as, as we just said, France is going to produce at a point in which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we know that if she lowered the price from 20 to 18 dollars, then the marginal cost after she lowered the price have to be at least, you know, as great as that. If, if not, she wouldn't she wouldn't be maximizing profit. So that could be true. Let's read D to see if we can eliminate D, and then we kept with C. France marginal cost must equal 18 dollars for her to be satisfied with her decision. Well, that's also wrong because, as we said, she will actually maximize profits where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, and marginal revenue has to be less than $18 because marginal revenue is always going to be less than price. So marginal cost cannot be $18. It has to be less than $18. So clearly the answer here is C. So this is a, a difficult question. Go over a couple of times. Maybe you want to draw a graph as we are talking about this. That might help you out. But basically, as you actually, if you just simply write those three things, um, make sure that whatever answer you have limits itself to those to those things that we know about in a monopoly then you should be fine for this type of questions what we're going to do is the one we did in the review today I, I thought a lot of people missed this question so i wanted to take a time to go over it again the question reads suppose when a monopoly is produced at 100 units its average revenue is eight its marginal revenue is five its marginal cost is four and its average cost total cost is three now from this we know what that monopoly is, is, is what do we know about monopoly profits should the monopoly increase or decrease output to increase or decrease profits? And what should they do to price? Well, the first thing, let's take one thing at a time. The first thing is, let's find out if they're maximizing profits or not. Again, they maximize profits where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. If marginal revenue doesn't equal marginal cost, then they're, they're not maximizing profits. Here, marginal revenue is five, marginal cost is four. So clearly, they're not maximizing profits, so that eliminates A. And clearly, we're left with B, C, D, or E. Now, we know they're not maximizing profits. So what should they do in order to increase profits? Should they decrease output or increase output? Well, if they decrease output, then how much revenue they lose? Well, they lose $5 because per unit because that was uh, how much additional revenue they had in the last unit. And how much cost they lose? Well, they lose $4 because that was the additional cost on the last unit. So if they reduce output, they lose $5 of revenue Per, out, per unit and four dollars of cost per unit so they're losing more revenue than cost so their profits will even go they will down even more now if they increase their production then their revenue goes up by five dollars and the cost only goes up by four dollars so their profits goes up by one dollar in every unit so clearly increasing output will be what they have to do in order to increase profits so that answers the second blank, which is produce more. That eliminates D and E. So we're left with only B and C. And the only thing we need to find out is if the monopoly is going to charge a higher price or a lower price. The answer to this has to do with the demand curve. We know that the monopoly is going to price at the demand curve. And the demand curve is downward sloping. So if they want to produce more output, they will need to lower the price. That's just no way around it, right? The demand curve is downward sloping. Other way of, of looking at this is that if the monopoly is actually pricing the best it can to the people he's selling so if they want if he wants to entice new people to buy their product right if they want to sell more they have to entice more people to buy the product and they could only do that by reducing the price because those people already had decided that they weren't going to buy at the price they had so they, if they if the monopolists want to sell more units they have to entice people by lowering the price so that makes the answer uh, b Okay, this is a difficult question, but if they, again, if you take it step by step, perhaps do a little um, diagram or maybe write the name, the numbers in a separate sheet of paper, you should be able to get the right answer.